This is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones, obviously, under heavy, heavy, heavy Masonic <laughs> influence. <laughs> Everything we thought was real is a lie. Everything is a lie. Nothing is real. We need some truth. Where can we find the truth? Over here, 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 here. The quest for truth is an adventurous one if approached in that fashion. Trials and tribulations await. Walls that social normality have placed before you block the light of realism from shining through. The tedious process of chipping away at the walls lets streams of light peek through. A light so bright it singes the skin to the degree one has to reconstruct the wall to block it. In short, you can't handle the truth alone. But through the networking of information, together we can rise above the wall before you, filtering the light to a tolerable level. What's up, brothers and sisters? Truth is in the dawns of the ten four hat. Because we don't believe in magic bullets or buildings to fall like that. Man, it is Thursday, September 15th, 2016, man. And as always, I want to give a big shout out to all the awesome cats joining us in the Wookie Cave. What's going on, guys? At truefrequencyradio.com slash chat. Nothing but love for you guys and girls out there and everyone else listening on the FM frequencies at 90.7. In Denver, Colorado, 97.3 in Eugene, Oregon, all around the world. Anybody out there, no matter what dimension you are in, whether you listen aliens, whatever. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Kenneth Webb, a.k.a. Change the Channel, along with my co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, Scott Lopez. What's going on, brother? Oh, man, another man. It just gets crazier. I can't. I can't <laughs> state it enough. It just wow. Every every time, I, I'm every. always just yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say anymore. Week after week after week, and the madness it never ends. But I'm gonna tell you what. Tonight, joining us is a really good friend, a brother in arms. I mean, the mean dream Photoshop machine, a brother from another mother. Bill Demaris, how's it going, brother? I am just in awe that I am actually talking to one of my greatest uh, ad- ad- admirers. No, <laughs> one of my greatest mentors. How you doing, Ken? Oh, I'm doing doing good, doing good tonight, man. And um, man, what we got to do tonight, right? I, I, I just well, well, first off, first off. Bill, what I wanted to tell you was that, you know, while I've got you here, man, you make so many people's day with your memes. I mean, personally, I collect, you know, I collect them. I'll tell you when I'm collecting them. I mean, but there's so much more to the story here. Now, I don't know. We don't know. Me and Scott don't know the whole story. But so, you know, what I want to do is I want, while I have you here, while we have you here, is, is I want to dive into events in your life, you know, what, what really, you know, what got you started, you know, what, what, what started you on your quest for truth? Like the first instance, something that really keeps your brain to go like, man, there's, there's, there's something going on in the world I, and there's something that's not off and it kind of led you. Do, you. do you have one of those moments that you can pinpoint? Uh, most certainly so. And I, I wanted to say hello to Scott. What, what, what a giant of a man. Uh, I would have to say that it was, without a doubt, loose change because I was just one of those people that watched, saw and accepted till loose change came along. And then it was Alex Jones. And then you were you were the one that put up uh, the Obama deception. And from then on, I was one of your greatest admirers. Seriously. I know. I know. Well, you know. Let, let, me, let me ask you this, because this is always something that, that crosses my mind with people I haven't had on the show. And um, what, what we wonder a lot of times, is there any event or discovery that, you know, that really threw you for a loop, that really gave you that boost? I mean, a lot of people, when they start out, it's like these little tiny things that happen. Some people are just full-fledged thrown into the reality kind of things. But was there anything like a discovery or 
you know, whether it was a video that you saw, whether it was like a declassified government document of some sort that you came across, but, you know, something that threw you for a loop, that that blew your mind to the degree that you knew without a shadow of a doubt that the world around you was nothing like you had once thought. Uh, I, I can pinpoint it. I was playing on a poker table at Poker Stars, and I had the icon for the earthcode.com, my book. And this gentleman contacted me through my website that he was on the poker table with me, and he read the first two chapters of my book. And he was the one that turned me on to um, light workers and uh, Divine Cosmos, uh, um, David Wilcox. And that's when I began to realize that this is not a 3D world, that there are other realms, that uh, I did have a purpose in life as a light worker. And then I find out that, you know, light workers, some people interpret as those carrying the light on Satan's side. But I came into the reality that the world was not what I grew up to know it as. And all these myths and and theories and so many of them were true and as as i looked further that's when i found out that history from the day they told me that we were cavemen and crawled out of the caves i started looking and i started looking and i started looking and that's when i found out that my whole life has been a lie up until i started searching for the truth which was shortly after i started my first youtube channel um 9 2007 about mm. kicked my butt. <clears throat> mm. yeah, there's a lot, a lot of people out there like to. So when is the when is the first time that you did something like an, an, an activism, whether it was a meme or you uh, you know took to the street or you even just talked to somebody? What was the first time that you you know like metaphorically took to the street and did something about these things you were learning? Well, the the street was basically roommates and. Uh, people that lived around me in my neighborhood and it was like beating my head against the wall gentlemen were trying to tell me that you don't understand energy you ever see them karate guys punch the top brick and the bottom brick breaks oh my god i knew that i i knew that i was in for a you know uh how do you put it i was in for a tough haul just convincing anybody of reality at all it really was tough in the beginning. Activism, I've never been out there protesting, but I did start my YouTube channel as a um, photoshopping, artsy type thing. And then I hooked that's up. Pro- that's, pro- that's protesting right there, brother. Memes, anything you put out there is a form of protest to show. Like, and I'm telling you, you do it good, brother. Really do, man. Like I said, you put a smile on my face every time I see your work. I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, like it could be a crappy day. Honestly, Bill, it could be a crappy day. I come in and I sit down, and then you throw up, throw up some of your work, and I'm like, and I'll smile, like, yeah, give me that, it give me that juice to 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 pull me back into the moment, you know. So, yeah, hats uh, off. I, I I am so touched. You know, they say that, you know goosebumps are chi, and I've never had so much chi flowing through my body as I have for the past four weeks. Uh, as I said, I started off with, with artsy stuff and I, I started doing music videos for a singer in England called Jan Christie. But when I started seeing videos that woke me up, I started putting them on my channels and then YouTube kept taking them away and I kept building new ones and they kept taking them away and I kept building new ones. And right now I have five channels and my major channel has, uh, 18,000, almost 19,000 subscribers and near 10 million views. And that completely blows me away. My most proud video, though, is a hit piece I did on Hillary called Hillary, the true beast or the true beast that Hillary is. I have over 10 million. 10 million i have over 2 million views on that one video well let the let, let the listeners be able to let them know your youtube channel what is your youtube channel my youtube channel is mr purple tie the reason for that strange name which i've been accused of being uh, you know uh, uh what's the word a uh, bad guy is because i use the word purple that was a backup channel after i lost two channels and the reason it was mr purple tie is 
that was my animated channel that I only put animated cartoons on. And my favorite character was Mr. Purple Tie. I also have Fall of Media, Mr. Earth Code, my William Demarest channel, and I know there's one. Oh, Vexstar. Vexstar is my <laughs> Vexstar is my actual. Well, it's who I actually am. Bill Demarest is actually an alter ego of Vexstar. That's a long involved story, and we can get into that later. But yeah, I started ripping off other people's work, and then I started mixing my own. And the ones I am most proud of are the praise and, and pats on the back and the thank yous I get from Mr. Brooks Agnew. Now, this man has like 185 IQ at the age of 13. There isn't anything he can't fly and or drive, started an electric car comp- electric truck company. And he's telling me I made him famous with YouTube. So I chuckle a bit, but uh, it's... It, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean that's the thing. I, I don't think I don't think it's really biting. I think it's you find something interesting enough to share with others that might not see it on their channel, kind of thing. That's why when you know back in the day when I got into YouTube, I, I did that with Alex Jones's stuff, and, and you see you see how those hits have have got you know. And I was just sharing, you know, just sharing the information basically. You know, a lot of people do it, and I, I think that's that's what we have to do. You know, we have to share really good stuff, information, because that's what the network is about, networking information, and that's what we have to do amongst ourselves. And, you know, that's what that's the cool thing about TFR, like we were talking before the show, you know, Bill, about TFR being, you know, a really good outlet for us to be able to share information. You know, I mean, even, you know, Facebook sucks, but we can share information. We, and we, you know, and I like it when it's done in a creative style. I like the, the stereotypical style, the documentary style. I like the comedy. I like music. I like, I like it because it reaches so many different people in so many different ways. But the Photoshop stuff, you know, the, the memes that reaches everybody. That's a really good balance you know, platform to be able to share stuff. But, you know, I always have to ask this question too, because before we get too far into those things is, you know, back then when you, when you came around and you started doing things, you started getting active. I mean, did, you know, were your peers and family members supportive? I mean, I'm sure it's gotta be some, you know, balance there, you know, some didn't like it, some didn't know. Did they just think you were crazy or did, I mean, I'm sure you had the ones that think you're crazy and then some that were supportive or, I mean, it could go either way. So what, what, what happened with you? Uh, I got to laugh because uh, I I had been estranged from my family basically since I was 21. They, they wanted me on... Um, uh, psychotropic drugs. Uh, they, 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 my brother would not help me four years ago when I was desperate, destitute in the streets, yada, yada, yada. He would not help me unless I were under a doctor's care. So basically my family doesn't even come into the picture. I told my brother, he's got a lovely house up in Sebring. And I asked him, do you have silver? Do you have gold? Do you have food stores? This was five years ago on a Memorial day weekend. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And, well, five years later, you know, it sounded crazy back then, but he, he's got enough property for a garden. He should have gold. He should have silver. And as I said, he looked at me like I was crazy, and basically I cut all ties with my family. But when it comes to friends, I, I love bringing up a small subject just to see if they uh, – know where I'm coming from. And I've run into a few people that are pretty much awake. I've run into some people that just, you know, uh, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm a conspiracy researcher. One of the gentlemen at work, he says to me, I I hear you're into conspiracies. Uh, How far back do your conspiracies go? I mean, I, I went back to the Liberty. I went back to the Gulf of Tonkin. And I brought him up to chemtrails. And he was interested. I also started a conversation with a a Jamaican gentleman who's a truck driver at work. And I mean, we sat there and we back and forth and we back and forth. And it basically wasn't anything that I knew that he didn't know, which blew my mind. And Margaret, the woman that was on um, Sean Karen's show with me, she's been a YouTube friend for about four or five years. 
Well, she touched me with a video. I messaged her. She gave me her phone number. I was on the phone with her for two hours, and it blew me away. Here's a woman a little – oh, she's about my age, which is old. And there was nothing that she didn't know. There was nothing that I didn't know. And I got to tell you something funny. For this show, I had one of the guys at work. He says to me, well, what do you know, Bill? I says, well, what would you like to know? He asked me about the arc. He asked me about um, uh, what did they serve at the Last Supper. He asked me about chemtrail. He was testing me. And I'm standing there doing my job, and, and I'm just rattling off everything I know. Just waiting for you to slip up. No, he was, he was, he was really interested. This, is what, this was what was really oh, okay. good with this conversation. No, he, he, he sat back in amazement because I literally work with, with 100 guys that are down and out. They're trying to get their lives together, as I was four years ago. And they all, they all, my job would not be as wonderful as it is if every morning so many of these guys are just so happy to see me and I'm happy to see them. But, um, yeah, there are just so many people that I could not even start a conversation with. Look up, see chemtrails. What's that? Oh, yeah. Okay. See ya. Yeah, you've been there. You've done that. Oh, yeah. But, hey, you know, any suggestions for people out there, you know? I mean, because you've been doing it. You've been doing it for a while. I mean, uh, you know, putting the information out there, you know. But there's a lot of people out there who, you know, listen to, you know, just like we all were in the beginning, you know. We, we were hearing information and we wanted to do something about it. So, I mean, is there any advice or suggestions for people out there wanting to get involved in, you know, in the alternative media or any of those types of activism that, you you know, give them words of inspiration, you know, like, you know. Uh, Start a YouTube channel, for one. Practice, play with a a video editor. Uh, There are enough free ones. Uh, When it comes to talking to people face-to-face, you you start off small with something that – Everybody seems to know. And then you find out whether or not they're aware or, you know, you've got to find out if they're just going about their day to day life and uh, unaware of everything and anything. It's it's simple conversations to start there for activism. My last video, which was only the second one I ever did live because I just uh, I would freeze up. So I actually wrote scripts. And I read them. And the thing is, with a video editor, I can read the same thing over two or three times if it didn't sound right the first time. Then I'll go through the video editor and I will choose the best. I don't know. It could be five words or it could be half a sentence. And the uh, the one that I did on uh, the Earth Code, which is still a private link, which I'm going to talk about on Kev's show on the 29th, uh, I listened to it. And I am blown away. I sound, I'm not batting myself on the back, but I sound so good to myself and so, I I, I am blown away by my own work. Excuse me, I have to put my arm back in the socket. (laughs) You know what, Bill? You know what, Bill? What? Everybody is always messaging about, even when I put it out on Facebook and I put out the advertisement on Facebook, you want to be on the show. And it was all said, and I seen it in the chat room at truefrequency.com slash chat. And they were asking, you know, how did you get into Photoshop? When, did, you know, when do you, I, I, I remember I started working with Photoshop back when it was 2.0. And right. It was like a self-taught study at a community right. college and stuff. Right. I mean, how how long have you been? Because you 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 pretty dead going good, man. It it does. It catches me off the guard all the time. Like you seen him, Scotty, right? Yeah. I mean, oh that, yeah, that he, stuff is he, off the chain. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I used to be the Photoshop assassin with TFR, but now Bill has. Uh, uh, I think he has ascended to the throne of that. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I I had a simple uh, XP. Uh, photoshopping program which I wish I had back because I could do things on that thing I could, can't do now without a lot of extra work 
Uh, as I said, I started a YouTube channel. I've started with Photoshopping. I started just just playing with Photoshopping. So I went and I looked for a um, a slideshow format that I could speed them up so I could go from one picture to another, you know, and so it would move. And I came across Photo Story 3, which does not work with Windows 8, but it does work with Windows 10. And it allows you to start at any spot on a on a specific picture and move the camera and expand anywhere you want on one picture. Then using Windows Movie Maker, the older one, you can't blend one clip over another with the new one. They seem to keep improving, but they take details away. So I went with a uh, uh, Sony Vegas 11, which is my favorite. But I started making my pictures move and it it blew me away what what i was doing so i put music to it and i started a youtube channel and as i said i put up artsy photoshop just and i found out i wasn't getting any hits so and like i said then i but the thing is i didn't really get good until i was in the in the chat room with kev show and the most difficult and the most time-consuming one I did up until that date was that mosquito with Hillary head on it, because the detail, the legs, the just cutting it out a little piece at a time, a little piece at a time, a little piece at a time, took a lot of time to do that one. Then I found out what I do is you you take a picture, you blow it up 400, 500 times big, you take the eraser and you erase what you want so it's and it, it comes to me like I, I see that little green man with the with the gentleman laying on the ground and i said gotta put kev's head on that that's that's beautiful and kev as the ice cream man i i saw this ice cream man and i remember that, that was picture. awesome <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the, the, the that was face. good i just saw that today i just saw that today that's the first time i've seen the ice cream man and I was going over there. I was like, does he have any pictures of him that I can use on the fly? I was like, he doesn't have any pictures of him. It's all the dark, the silhouetted, and the dark stuff. But then there goes old Kev, and it looks good. I mean, down to the pixels, it's really, it's a really good piece. And I've, I've done photo manipulation for, like, as far as, like, taking people and different people and different pictures and putting them together in one picture because, you know, they were smiling and changed heads on people. You know, and a lot of photo restoration work. Over the last twenty some years, and I'm telling you, that was just perfect. I laughed and laughed. I was like, oh, that that one was good. But it, it, it's in the eye of the beholder because I saw that. I saw it, and I said, "Oh, I that picture of Kev's face holding an ice cream cone in my mind is perfect." And the the secret is you cut you cut out the face, not all of it, and then what you do is you put the head down. And then you layer the other one over it. And the layer on top, you can erase the edges uh, around it. And it, 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 I've been doing this. I've gotten better. I mean, uh, the past four months, I'm quicker now. I'm faster. Like when uh, Kev said, uh, he said the three amigos. And that was the three stooges. I ran. I got the three stooges. Somebody maybe Lucky said, uh, uh, said "Bill, you got to do a Photoshop." I ran. I got the Three Stooges. I cut out the faces. I I I, I have a folder. It's called characters. I have the heads already, and and some heads just aren't turned the right angle. So I'll, I'll work a good long time on them, and they just right. won't be ready. I have a I have a head folder too, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all do. See, that's that Photoshop geek stuff, man. We collect body parts. Yeah. Hands, ears, everything. <laughs> one, one, one of my best was, was, was Popeye dancing. I mean, I, I, I took one picture, I cut it up, I stretched it, I, I moved it back and forth. I, I just, and yeah, that, that's really, and then the GIF. Oh, the, the GIFs, I, I bought one of those for $19 and, and they just, uh, what I can do with that I mean, I will start with anywhere from uh, 200 frames to 1,100 frames, and I will take out the unnecessary frames for the chat room, which is about a max of 60. Perfect is 
around 50. And, and my favorites are the, uh, you know, my persona, uh, they live. When he sees the man with his glasses on and he shoots the, um, the, the, the invisible um, viewing camera, when he shoots that, I, I can, can uh, Scotty, you know, thank you. I mean, I, I know, I know people enjoyed my work, but, uh, you know, it's, I, I have to honestly thank you that uh, I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing it for, for gratitude or applause. I mean, I just wanted to be part of the family. And I, I should, you know, it, it definitely, it That's definitely, it, it definitely brings like, um, uh, you know, like it, it, it brings a little special something to a, to the chat room. You know, I mean, it really kind of adds an extra flair there and, that and the Facebook, don't and see. the Facebook, uh huh, exactly, yep. uh, and everywhere, and it puts smiles on people's faces and it educates them, and you know, because you, you're doing those things, and then you, you're doing other things, and you are, are progressing, and you're going along, and you're continuing the fight, brother. And, and I mean, seriously, my hats off to you because I love to see that with everybody, everybody over here on True Frequency and around that I see this, you know, doing something, anything, even just making a daggone post, you know, uh, you know, saying their opinion and how they see things. I always appreciate that. And I think that's how they, they do it out there. Anyhow, we're getting ready to go to break. When we get back, we will continue. And, man, it's going to be all the hinges. Man, oh man, it's a absolutely off the hinges night here on the Quest for Truth. Kenneth Webb, aka Change the Channel, along with my cohort, the co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, Scotty Lopez, and our special guest, Bill, the man, Emerson. I'm telling you, man, it's gonna be off the chain. But what we got to flip to right now, brothers, is the current state of events. Now, really, really. Now, I, I want to go around to both of you guys. Where we are today, what you seen, what we're seeing in the mainstream media, what's going on in the world, what is the pulse line of the world in your guys' eyes? Uh, mm. I get, mm. Go, go <laughs> ahead, Bill. Uh, I, I think they are just seeing how insane they can be, telling us. I just, they just want to see how many people go about their day not being awake, and they can only they can only do that by putting in a body double for Hillary and then telling us the next day she's fine, she's she's on the tour. What? Wait, wait a minute. I this just it's not real. So as I said, they're they're just they're just pushing the limit on everything, and who can say what's a true story and what's a not story. I don't own a television, so when it comes to the mainstream media, the only mainstream media I get is the Jimmy Cephalo show, talk show on uh, W. I'll give him a plug. W Y O D here in Miami, and uh, Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity, and their news breaks. And it's like I'm driving to work, and I, I, I'm seriously shaking my head. The thing is, can't ask me how crazy is the world out there. Well, the crazier it gets, the more I realize how sane I am. Let them play their, let them do whatever they want. I'm just going to sit back and go, okay. It's entertaining. I got the best, I got the best front row seat in the house. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I want to say I'm enjoying it. <laughs> and that is, that is until they make Hillary president. And, and I say, you know, I've told a lot of people, I'm going to stop the world. Lower rope and get off. And that was my first impression, which is basically jumping out of a tree uh, with a rope around my neck. And that kind of scared me. So uh, I, many people know this old man, he's going out, he, he's packing his car, going to Colorado, and he's going to die a happy old high man. And that's. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, have to, I have to agree with you, Bill. I got to agree with you there. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Front row seats. Hey, I would not want to sit in any other seat. In the seat I'm sitting in right now doing exactly what I am doing. Man, I'm going to tell you what. It's like, yeah, the bad things on. But I'm telling you, I'm glad. And I'm, just like you guys, you and Scott, 
I know you guys are glad, everybody listening out there, that we on the right side. We know the righteousness of what we do. We know it. It's not like, you know, we're a work in progress. Everything is a work in progress. But we at least, we at least are awake enough to really, just really see what's going on. What do you think, Scott? Oh, definitely. I mean, <laughs> it, it, what a what an amazing time to be alive and witnessing all of this craziness. I mean, think about it. I mean, <laughs> life would be pretty boring if nothing like this was going on. And I mean, it, it's sort of like I don't know. It's like Rome is burning and we have a front row seat to it. it. Or it's kind of like that macabre curiosity you have when there's a car wreck and you know, like something got mangled and there's like a big, you know, something's on fire and you're going by on the highway and you're like, I got to take a look at it though. I meant something happened. It's just, it's it's definitely be on the, be on the right side. Cause I know exactly. Yeah. And you know that, you know that, yeah, that we have chosen, the right the right <laughs> path to to you know to all this and we're definitely trying to uh warn people that hey there's a wreck ahead you might want to avoid that <laughs> <laughs> i i gotta say i i still fight the conspiracy theory label i am a conspiracy re- researcher I am a conspiracy researcher because they are all conspiracies. And I never thought that I would ever be so proud as to be a tinfoil hat wearer, even though it's made out of aluminum. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 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 It's, a, it's a badge of honor now. Anybody calls me a conspiracy <laughs> theorist, I'm like, thank you. Thank exactly. you. Because <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna think, I want to think, even on the conspiracy theory as a label, you're a conspiracy theorist. You, that, you know what that means? That means I'm thinking. I might not absolutely know, but I'm not going to because of the actual conspiracies that have went on that I have researched and that I have seen it declassified, even in their own words, government documents out there, you know, those things that I'm going to question everything. And if you don't question everything, Something is seriously wrong with you. I'm sorry, and I ain't trying to put myself higher than nobody, but if you're sitting in that boat where everything that the mainstream media tells you and these politicians tell you, you take to the bank, oh, come on now. Even the water Plus, you know, history books. People just need to look up the whole, you know, why uh, why the term conspiracy theorist is, you know, coined as a label on people. I mean, that's oh, a CIA. Too much of that, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a CIA, you know, uh, sort of a pejorative, you know, to tag people that were questioning the Kennedy assassination, right? They were called conspiracy theorists, <clears> and <throat> it was thrown out there as a, you know, a pejorative. Somebody told me that it goes even further back than that. You know, when I mentioned, you know, when I thought that conspiracy theory, oh, no, 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 no. And they sent me a link to, if I'm not mistaken, it goes back to like the late 30s. You know, but, you know, they yeah, say it was, it was coined in the early 1900s around that yeah. time. Yeah. But they really kind of used it as a pejorative after the Kennedy assassination. Oh, yeah. They, they dug it up. <laughs> Yeah. And, and it, it's crazy. It's just like what I, I I try to keep myself, you know, just as me personally, I try to keep my message pretty simple and plain. And it's there. There it is in your government documents. Y'all lie. Y'all lie. Y'all create. Y'all created wars. You know, go for talking. You look at the LBJs and McNamara tapes that I wish. Oh, man, how I wish and beg. Please, please. That they would do now so we could have some kind of recorded thing. Because I would love to hear, you know, Clinton's tapes and, and Bush tapes and all these other tapes, you know, since, uh, oh, who was it? It was Carter. Carter was the, the president, the first president didn't have the recorded phone calls, which I'm sure they do probably, you know, somewhere. Somebody's of got course. them anyway. But, but, you know, just not having those records and, and we can see. This is what they did. And this thing hadn't been just happening here in this country. I mean, it's worldwide. It's called the elite sitting up, you know, the proverbial elite, you know, sitting up behind on the mountain looking down on everybody else, you know, going off at them, you know, trying to control them, trying to take over the world. That is the new world order concept. It's not a boys club. It's not that. This is everybody's club. Everybody has their, you know, their idea of a new world order, the way the world should be. 
And these elite cats sitting up there had the means to do it. Now, if you take all these mindless sheeple that believe every single thing, even though they have learned and known and seen and viewed in their entire lifetime the same thing that was going on, you know, they 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 they, they don't pick it up, you know. Uh oh, hold up, little Kenneth is in there hollering. <laughs> but you know, I. I think that it's so put out there for people to know, and it's like in this day and age, it seems like that that we are so dumbed down, whether it be the water we drink, the stuff they spray on us, the things, the food we eat. Maybe it's 20, 30, 40 years of eating Doritos. I don't know what it is. And I think it's us. It is a dinner fire. They want to know. They throw us crap. All CIA videos back in the day that went from video the audio tapes because it got so stupid, it yeah. got so retarded that, that they they stopped doing it. And I'm like, why? Because they had the means. They have Holly, Hollywood straight up means to have nothing but the best of the best, yeah. and 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 what they show you. But they show you I'm this gonna, crap. There is a. Pope. I'm going to have to agree. Yeah, yes, I'm going to have to agree with Bill on this one. I think what they're doing is they're like trying to push it to the edge and see how far they can go with it. Like just putting out the most absolute ridiculous things to see what the public can, will actually buy. And may, you know, they're just gauging on basically how dumbed down the public actually is. And I think maybe once they reach a, like a threshold where maybe some, you know, people actually start questioning what's going on, then they'll back off maybe a little bit. But I think they do all this as a test just to see what the public actually will buy. I, that, that's the reason I did the video uh, to all Americans. I mean, the ultimate, the ultimate, the ultimate is 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 the Hillary impersonator coming out of Webb Hubble's daughter's apartment, basically dancing. No security. I mean, she's circled. She's got people holding her up, carrying her. They got a doctor with a EpiPen. Here this woman comes out. She's lovely now. And, you know, somebody pointed out that she shakes the cop's hand. She hates cops. And then, then she breathes all over this little girl. I mean, that 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 was the one that set me off to creating a live video of myself and ranting. It's like, are you serious? That, that, was, that was the ultimate. That was absolutely the ultimate for me. I mean, I've seen some stuff that it, 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 they put out there that, that's foolish, but that did it for me. I, well, it was this morning when I hear, oh, Hillary's fine. She's now campaigning again. Are you really, are you, are, are you farging me? <laughs> I like Johnny well, she got that pneumonia. She got that, new, she got that new, pneumonia shot. She was all cool <laughs> in the gang out the cut. No, uh man, it's a funky monkey going on. And, you know, and there's a lot of things. And you, and so, so many things. I remember what was that? What was the shooting where they had the father come out? What's it? Cause there's so, you know, there's so oh many of those kind God. of things. Sandy Hook. The father, where the, where the, where Sandy the dad Hook. came out and was and laughing. He, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you what I'm sitting there and, you know, and I, I got, man, I got three grandchildren and I, I got three sons. You know, I'm like, uh, I, I'm sitting here and I watched that video and I was like, this is real. Right here. This is no fake. Here's this guy. Now I seen the afterwards uh video when he's on on when they when the the main stain and started recording him. And I'm sitting there like, Oh my god, this dude's laughing, he gets into character, then he goes into the microphone with his He's just sitting there laughing, he comes to the mic and he eh, eh, eh. now I don't care where you sit on think about conspiracies. Come on, man. There's something funky about that. There is absolutely something funky, but, and you cannot debate it. You can't say, oh, he was trying to make the best. I mean, I can't, and I, and that's what I do. And I, you know, what we do, we try to think, you know, cause it's a quest for truth here. And we're trying to think, you know, what could make this man go from this? He just, he lost his kid. He's coming up here. He's laughing and chucking. He gets to the mic. He gets into character. <laughs> and you're like, Oh, well, I'll tell you God. what, if, I'll tell you what, if, if my child was just killed, I wouldn't even be wanting to talk on yeah, camera exactly. to begin with, 
right? I mean, that's yep. just weird. Why would you even want anybody around you like that or be, you know, hounded by the media or be doing anything like that? I would totally not even want to deal with any of that. I would be really grieving at the loss of my child. And then you got like, I think it was the Orlando shooting. You had one of the moms come up there, absolutely no emotion. And it was like the first thing she's talking about is gun control. And I'm like, really? Is that is that your first thought? <laughs> and, uh, you know, the whole Dallas thing, remember, it was multiple shooters at first. And then. Yeah, there was it, one it, dude who was a National and they said, Guard dude. That's another one, Scott. That's a dang old another one. They yeah. And, 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 and they also, <laughs> and they also no said, you know. Remember, it was uh, multiple shooters from elevated positions, and then you see the video come out, and the dude's down on the ground, you know, on and street he, level. And, and somehow, and so. somehow, this cat is miraculously. Now, I checked that on his training. That was the that was the first thing I did. I was like, man, he kept this dude. He must be like one of these cats out there. You know, he still team six or something. He out there pop he down on the ground taking people out. He up high sniping people. He rolling around the whole thing. And then come find out. No, nah, this dude wasn't nothing. They said the the best that they could do for his training was talking about at the house his neighbor seen him crawling out in the backyard with a gun. And I'm like, wait up, no, nah, come on, I'm sorry. I don't have no I Ivy League education, man, but I I, I know a, a little bit about something, and that ain't it. That didn't happen, man. No way. That was some funky monkey stuff. And I'm sorry. And I don't see. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at anybody who questions Hitler. It's like, oh my God, something else that cooks my can, gentlemen. Okay, did we do it? Did we do the cook can? I, I'm sorry, but I got to. What cooks my can is you people questioning about Hillary's health. Do not, do not do that. You clown of the week. You cook my can. I'm so sick of it. Oh my God. Do not people sit there and cuss you out because you want to question Hillary. Oh, that's some right wing conspiracy. Something wrong with it. It's stupid. It's dumb. No, that guy didn't run around down there shooting up a bunch of people like he did. I'm sorry, guys, unless this guy, I don't know. I, I don't, I can't think of any scenario that this guy would be able to do that down in Dallas. No more than there's something wrong with people going like this woman's sick. She coughing, she twitching, she convulsing. She don't know where she is half the time. Dang, she don't even look the same. Dang, she put over sixty pounds. Oh no, she lost sixty pounds. What in the world? Going? She looked thirty years young. No, what in the world is happening? Because out here we don't know. That's what cooked my can. So these people out there who think. There's something wrong with questioning if this woman's sick. Oh, my God. You question the, the daggone LCI, the video, the audio tape, to the daggone Photoshop crap that they give us. Oh, my goodness. And and, and this is an identifier, people, I promise you, of where society is. We have to pay close attention because the stuff that they put out with that knee-jerk reaction that they want, they want you to think that something happened. And if you look at it, you're like, you got a question. Like, huh? You scratch it, huh? What? That doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. What do you think, guys? I, I think I had to mute my microphone because I, I, I don't ever remember laughing uh, this much. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> I, swear. I just, I, I had, I had to mute, man, because nobody would have heard what you said. Uh, it's the simple stuff, like when uh, Clinton. Uh, he's going to Vince Foster's funeral, man, and he's laughing it up until he sees the camera and then he starts crying. It, it, it is the people's actions. And what really frosts my can is when I find out that they, they've got a, uh, a fund for the uh, Pulse shooting when they're still collecting money for Sandy Hook. And, yes, that gentleman was laughing before he got to the microphone because he just kept seeing those zeros build up in his bank account. I mean, what else Ting. would you do? <laughs> that's ching is right but yeah <laughs> thank you thank you ken i ha i haven't laughed this hard <laughs> since i don't know i can't remember ever laughing this hard <laughs> oh man it's good having you on the show brother man because i've known you for a while but ain't got the chance we have me and scott ain't got a chance to chat with you that you know like that man it's good having you on the show no doubt and getting your perspective man because these yeah. charts always got some stuff going on all the time we need everybody to be on radio, we need everybody out there doing memes. We need everybody who got a voice to put it out there, put this crap out there. Because I'm serious, because to me, I, you know, and I keep thinking, dang, I'm getting older. Is that what it is? Or or they expecting us to be stupider? Because I know it ain't worth stupider, but, you know, 
you can feel me. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, seriously, they do. It's just like I can't believe some of this stuff. And I'm like, man, you know, 20, 30 years ago, I would have been like, what? Even then, when I didn't know crap about anything, I would have been like, oh, my God, these people have lost their mind. Because it's so, and it shows me, I'm like, oh, my God, people are out there, you know, who don't know. People don't really, they're not interested in politics, which is boring because I tell you what, guys, <laughs> you know, if, if it wasn't for all the stuff going on, I mean, really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting there spending hours and hours going through declassified government documents. I wish there was a world that I live in I have to do, and they, and they throw this crap out there at you, and people actually believe it. You know, I it blows my it really does blow my mind how stupidly they're going along with it because they have the resources to give us whatever ever yeah. they want to show us. They can make us believe, you know, you know, Jesus came back. They have the means and the technology to do that to people. And they've been researching it. That is the whole thing, the quest for truth. That you know, it's all about the knowledge that each one of us has. But we're getting ready to go to break. And when we get back, man, I'm telling you, it's an insane. I love having Bill on this show, man. You know, it's, it's really cooking tonight. And when we get back, we're going to continue on with what cooks I can. We're going to go to Scotty and, and see what cooks his can, because I know he got plenty of stuff from this week, too. And then we'll go to Bill. And welcome back to the Quest for Truth right here on Truth Frequency Radio, truthfrequencyradio.com. I'm your host, Scott Lopez, along with my co-host, the one and only Kenneth Webb, and Yay! our special guest, oh yeah, <laughs> and our special guest, the the man with the Photoshop plan, Bill Demarest. I don't know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to uh, second Ken on this. I think the whole, the whole Hillary Hell thing totally cooks my can. <laughs> I think it's so funny how just a week before... They had her up on Jimmy Kimmel, you know, popping open pickle jars to show that she's in excellent health. And then the <laughs> next, <laughs> the next week, she she goes down. I mean, she just went down. Pickle she, jars, she, man, I, I know. And, 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 <laughs> I, I, I mean, I this the whole irony in that just. Um, it, it, it was. And then it was she kind failed. Of, and then she failed. Yeah, it was so <laughs> nice to save her. I mean, it, it, it was so nice to save her that because you know they they drug her up on national TV to show how healthy she really was. And, you and know, then, how, and, and push that line. Yeah, and then wham. You know, like she's got to open up a pickle jar. That doesn't prove any mental stability with whatever she got. They're making a. She's sitting there twitching and and you know going zombie fired on us. You know, I mean, really. <laughs> you see the irony of pickle. Uh, once the cucumbers pickled, you never turns back to a cucumber. Plus, she was in a pickle. It's just I I crack up because I, I have I have a subliminal uh, what I do with my mind, which is what I'm going to share on the Kev Baker show and the Earth Code and the. Uh, the Pentium processor I put in my mind. Uh, we'll get to that when, later. When, 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 when you go, when you gonna be on the Cab Baker Show, bro? Uh, the 29th of this month, and I was I was on the show for a half hour last Wednesday, and as the show closed, he said that I would be on the show the 29th if it was okay with me, and we would talk about what I wanted to talk about. And after 41 years of doing what I've done with the Earth Code and downloading a program into my mind, I should release that video tonight, but uh, I want to keep that for Kev's show. The, the, um, the connection between words and numbers, uh, one word, one number, choose a word. It doesn't matter what that word is. Every time that word has been used, I don't want to say every time that word's been used in my life, but any significant moment in my life, that word comes up. It's um, it's a program I developed for the mind 41 years ago, and I wrote a book about it in 2005. I never did anything with it because I wasn't uh, mature enough to handle what I knew, and it did keep driving me crazy. And at the present time, I am – capable of doing a video series on exactly what the earth code is and how to use it without driving yourself insane. But when I hear the word pickle and Hillary, oh yeah, that, that's about all I got to say about the pickle. 
Yeah, and, and she's been doing it for a while, and people out there have been doing it for asking and questioning. But people, you know, all of the top, you know, all her little cabinet and all this little stuff want to come out there and get really crucified, cussing. You mother, you know, you know, can you, you, you know, about her questioning her daggone health. You know, <clears throat> oh, oh, <coughs> oh, Hillary, watch uh-huh. that, man. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's every, exactly, time that's, somebody, every time I hear somebody call, I do, Bill. I do every time I hear somebody call from Tiffany <laughs> Hillary. They should go. I, mean, I can't help well, it what we do. I I I think we we we've, we've done enough, Hillary. I, I I think we should move on. But yeah, Hillary Hillary consuming all of our uh, every breath and every time we go off, we think Hillary. Uh, that that that. <clears throat> burns my can i think that's your expression but uh yeah i i've had enough of hillary and enough of obama and oh you know you, you're talking about throwing stuff in our face come on we still we, we still haven't convinced anybody that that birth certificate is fake i mean come on <laughs> he's almost out of office and we can't prove to the world that it was fake i've had enough i've had enough uh, of i <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but the thing about that is, is I never took a a real stance on it. But if the file that they came out with in Hawaii was layered like that, what you can pull it in, you, you know, just as well as anybody does, Bill, you know, you pull it in. If it's got layers, what in the world? And I'm sitting here thinking just like those chopped up daggone Photoshop things and all these funky ass story, excuse me, funky stories that they do out there that they, they feed to us. You know, I'm sitting there thinking like, you know, this is this is purposely done for us. Absolutely. It's because, because it, Absolutely. It, 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 you know, because it's like, no, now you're making me, me, who who is like, I don't care if he's from Mars, he sucks. I don't care where he's from. He sucks. I, I'm ready to say goodbye <laughs> to this guy. I want somebody new up there that I can pounce on. I heard. I'm tired. I'm I sick. heard. I heard that they were floating. That that maybe yeah. they were floating the idea of throwing uh, Michelle up there and Bernie. No, <laughs> yeah. no, Michelle and, and Bernie. <laughs> Oh no! I, I'm gonna I, tell I, you, and now I'm gonna be like all them people because you know the clowns of the week. Also for me this week is all of those turds out there talking about if this person moves, I'm, I, if this person wins the presidential election, I'm gonna move. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, <laughs> really, really, bye bye, well, go on and move because I want. I'm hoping for the other person every time. Whether if they say if Hillary wins, I'm gonna move to the other country. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, good. I hope Hillary wins. And then they say, if Trump wins, I'm going to move over to Spain or something. I'm like, good. I hope Trump wins. I go back and forth just on. I wish both of them could win. So send all them turds out there talking all of that bull crap because they playing. They playing a role. They're playing. They want to be seen, and that's what I have problem. If you want to go out there, you want to protest. You want to do something. Know your business. And have some back and buy you. These cats are sitting there thinking, any fashion wins, I'm going to move. It's like, you're not going anywhere. Sit down. I wish you would go, but you're not going to go. It's not going to happen. You're going to sit here and you're going to start running your mouth even more to give yourself more publicity because you on the same lines of them turds that you're talking about. That's what's going on. What you think? I, I am absolutely hoping that Barbara Streisand leaves if uh, Hillary wins. But no, I am not leaving this. <laughs> I, I am not leaving this country. I will die a, a proud American. I, I, I am not leaving this country. I have no desire to. Absolutely not. And why uh, should we? Why should we leave? We're going to stand and fight. We're going to stand and fight. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's what cooks my can. As I'm sitting here thinking, like, what? Nah. uh and, and I, I remember Republicans and Democrats alike have told me, if you don't like this country, well, leave it. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, oh, my God, y'all just flipped the script, man. Don't let me break it down to you. Because <laughs> really, really, you were standing by me like, you know, when Bush was in office and I was calling him out. And yeah. you're going to call me out now. You're going to turn your back on me. You're sitting there screaming conspiracy when Bush was in office. All of a sudden, you're calling me conspiracy theorist in a 10 4 hat wearing like that. That it shames me somehow, and I'm gonna sit down or something. No, 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 no. I'm right on. Okay, it's you who are not on. And guess what? Guess what? If Trump wins, you cats gonna be crawling across that fence again, coming over here screaming conspiracy with me once again because we keep it real. We keep it real. 
we keep looking at what these people are doing. And don't put us in a black or white situation because there's a lots of shades of gray out there. There's so many shades of gray, and they want to put you in a black or white category, Republican, Democrat category. It's like, no. There, there is more than one faction trying to own the world, even though the earth, because they actually do. You know, they started this way back when, before we ever crawled out of the cave, which is a lie. But there are the white hats, and there are people being protected. But yeah, they they're fighting amongst themselves. I mean, it's not like one table. It's it's it. We know it's a mob, and they're feuding families. And I do see when they fight amongst each other, and yeah, kind of makes me happy. But uh, you know, I, I did want to say that I I take absolutely no medications. I don't want to say I'm immune to everything, but eating dirt gave me immunity as a kid. It's the same thing with this. As awake and as aware as we are, these people cannot affect us any longer. They just can't get through our armor. And and uh, the people in the chat room, which I, I haven't been in the chat room because I've been concentrating on the mute button because I did a really uh, terrible job on Kev's show with the mute button. I kept turning off the microphone from the button on my headset, which did nothing. It really is. It really is a great show because it produces people like you and Kev and Sean and Brooks. The, 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 if people would wake up and enjoy and believe what we are saying, it's a lot more entertaining seeing what we know versus just eating their BS day in and day out. Gentlemen at work came up with a great one, and I used it in my video, a Ph.D. in BS. Piled high and deep BS. <laughs> oh, totally, dude. Totally. And and, and, <laughs> and it is, you know, once you wake up to like all the stuff and you see the game that they play and everything, I mean, you totally look at things in a, a like, uh, okay, I, I have satellite so I can get all the mainstream media and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, when I watch it, you know, I'm not watching it. From the point of view of actually buying what they're telling me, I'm watching it to see what they're doing. You know, what what's the game that they're playing now? It, it's fun to watch them try and run around and 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 play these little games and, and and deceive everybody. And you can sit there and just call it out immediately because you know the the game plan that they're following and you can see what they're trying to do. It, it is. It is really fun. To just do that. And, and, you know, sometimes I'll, do, you know, and, and people are like, oh, well, you, you sitting there watching Fox News. No, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't watch Fox News because I'm like uh, buying into what they say. You know, I'll flip through all of them. I'll, I'll watch MSNBC yeah. and see what kind of, yeah. what kind of line that they're trying to pull and what kind of games they're trying to pull. I'll flip over to CNN, see what, what angle they're trying to come from. And, and yeah, it definitely is. Once you wake up to all this stuff, you you look at everything in a totally different light. I love when yeah. people call. I love when people call me. Oh, you must be a, a Republican. Well, then I tell them it's you know two different wings of Satan. Yada yada yada. But when they call me a Fox News watcher, that really frosts me. <laughs> because yeah, because that's what it's meant for, Bill. That's what it's meant for, Bill. That's what they do. And I tell you what, because, uh, man, I've been on the flip of the script from it. And I went from the Bush era and to like, oh, you just you, people couldn't because I do. I do a little spoken word, do some rap kind of stuff, too. Also, you know, in my repertoire of videos and, and they, they would call me a wigger. They would call me a hippie. They would call me a tree hugger. They call me a communist. And all this stuff for the longest time, you know, people would call me. And I'm sitting there going like, man, I'm a little bit of this and I'm a little bit of that. You got more labels uh, than I, I, anybody I'll, I know. Anybody. You got uh, more labels and I will than go. anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I will go, Bill. And I, I, I'll, I'll go. You know, some I got a little hippie in me. I got a little ghetto in me. I got a little gangster in me. I got a little soldier in me. I got a little bit of a lot of things in me, you know. And, and at that period, it was that. Me and Scott both. It's a quest for truth, man. You know, just like you, Bill. It's a quest for truth. We want to know the truth. And we ain't got no problem with dishing it out. No matter Republican, Democrat, mm -hmm. alien, lizard, 
lizard. I don't care any dimensional yeah, cats. Y'all want to come down? I don't <laughs> care who you is. We going to put you in the wood chipper. Wait, we don't, we ain't got no problems with it. I'm going to call you. If it ain't fair and you lying. Hey, man, I, that's what I'm going to do. I got something to say about it. And I, I don't care. And it's got nothing to do with the party. Woo! Woo! The party. Think about that. The Republican Party. Woo! Woo! The Democrat Party. Woo! Woo! Party ain't no party going on. Bunch of lies. Bunch of lies. Look at them how they did. They even said, you know, and I've seen this with Obama especially. They came out here because people start saying, like, wow, here's all these lies this guy told. He said he was going to do this, do this. He did the absolute opposite. I'm sitting there thinking, like, yep, here you go. Here you go. And people say, oh, they were, they were just campaign promises. Like, that changed the definition of a lie. It changed the definition of a lie, people. That's what I'm saying. No, it's a lie. You lied or you didn't lie. Ain't no little white lies we like to think when we tell people. We don't want to hurt people here, so we say something positive. Oh, no, no. At the end of the day, it's a lie. Can't problem. So that makes a lie. Okay. Nuh-uh. Oh, my goodness. After all that stuff. NDAA reauthorizing the Patriot Act. Patriot Act. NSA spying. Um, the, the, I, I'm, I've been biting at the bit because uh, the greatest resource you can have to watch this, it's like the program at a football game, is uh, Rules for Ra- Radicals by uh, Saul Alinsky. I, I, watch, I watch the Democrats play that game, and, and it's just – well, it's such an old playbook, but I've been watching Trump. And he's using the same rules. He's he's yeah. smart enough to, you know. <laughs> uh, oh, Bill. Oh, Bill. We're getting ready to go to the break. When we get back, we will continue this conversation. It's off the chain, man. Kenneth Webb, aka Change the Channel, along with my co-host, Scott Lopez, and our special guest, Bill Demers. We'll catch you on the other side. Uh, I tell you, Scott, uh, I was sitting here thinking, I, was, I thought they were just going to take it, and then I was like, oh, no. That's right. That's right. It's me. And I was like, oh, man, I just want to let Jimmy play on because he let you know, man. Hey, listen, Jimmy I'll take it ahead. anytime. Yeah, you know, I'll take it anytime you guys, you know, want to step out. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it, it, it's off the chain out here in the world. And, and I'm telling you, Quest for Truth is all about a beacon. Let's all search for the quest of truth. Educate me. Educate Scotty. Educate Bill. Let us know. Let us something. Let us know something that that we don't know, or if we incorrect, like me, I always want to know. I don't want to. Con- I don't want to contribute to you know false information or anything. You know, if it's a theory that we talk about, it's a theory. It's our theory. There's nothing wrong with theorizing. Jeez, and that's what we're gonna do here on the quest for truth. And I gotta ask the gentleman on the panel, Bill. And Scott, where do you see us going here in the next, you know, in the next year even? I mean, we, there's talks of war. I mean, we got, we got, uh, you know, they're going to Zika, Ooga Booga. We got the Zika out there here in the U.S., all around, up around Scott. Scott probably got it right now. We don't even know. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, all man. up there. Uh, I, I personally, uh, <laughs> I think they're going to string us along for a good long time because they're enjoying us as much as we're enjoying them. I I really don't know, but I do know one thing. Uh, As being a prepper, I have my 40 cans of Campbell's soup. Oh, don't eat out of a can. Well, you know, when the – what do they call them? The the gangs of people looking for food go up and down the street before they start eating people. I can eat my soup cold because it tastes good cold – and the people will not smell it and come and steal my Campbell's soup. Basically, what I'm getting at is, sure, if the mm, hits the fan, I'm going to see – I want to be here to see it. I will decide when I've had enough because I, I am not going to – I can't run anywhere. I'm going to stick it out for as long until those gangs come – You know, eat. I told my roommate, hey, Mike, when I die, I want you to eat me. You know, that's not too funny. But uh, <laughs> no, nah, man, you got to do in that situation. And it depends. <laughs> prepping, prepping is not this extreme where everything goes to chaos. Except for let's look where we live. Let's look in the locations we live and the things, the natural disasters that happen. I think that prepping should always be done for just everyday life, not 
just the major stuff that could possibly happen. And we know how how it could happen like that. I mean, from elect, you know, uh, the electricity going out, something hacked, something false flag, something, anything from weather, whether it's the snowstorm or it's the ice storm of the century. We don't know what earthquakes, you know, it, tsunamis, volcanoes. Yeah, I mean, pre- you don't know pre- what's going to happen. Yeah, prepping just used to be, uh, you know, what you just did. I mean, that was just part of a, you know, normal life. You always had something, you know, backed up. You know, look at all, you know, like our great grandparents, you know, people growing up during the Depression or just, you know, growing up, you know, during the Wild West and stuff. You always had us, you know, you always had stuff set away for if times got hard right and then yeah like the, you know, like the saying like the saying put it away for a rainy day you yeah, don't mm-hmm. know speaking of rain i live i live on the bullseye of hurricanes so you know as i said i got 40 cans of camel soup but i went 15 days without electricity took cold showers uh, so I, i'm i'm prepared to get through a tough time but as i said when the the roving gangs the word i was looking for when the roving gangs are looking for food I also uh, am prepared if uh, somebody comes to the door to take my gun, they will take me out. But I'm praying for a tsunami. It's quick. It's fast. I'm hanging out here on on the east coast of Florida. So I think a tsunami is a prayer come true for me versus FEMA camp and anything else, any other nightmare you can imagine these people having planned for us. And you know what? One other thing. Guillotine isn't so bad. It really isn't. Been there, done that. Sounds strange, but it's true. Yeah, you know, like in FEMA camps. I, I've, I've been in, I've been into it on a 9-11 video I did. I debunked this from years ago, and I reposted it on YouTube. <clears throat> People come on there, want to sit there and, you know, uh, you know, talk about, like, all of these crazy things. Things that really, you know, wasn't it wasn't any kind of logical debate about it they just brought up like all of the the storybook kinds of things and i'm i'm just like man really all of these things that go down man affect us all it's like fema camps exist internment camps ice camps and always the one thing they always put in in legislation and in bills that get passed is always what we deem necessary to use it for you know you're sitting there like that could be anything. That could be exactly, always, and that's the thing. You know, people people automatically say, you know, when they go, well, you know, FEMA camps. Well, they're not all called FEMA camps. They're just uh, whatever Use they for set anything. up for. Yeah, whatever they're set up for for emergency, right? So if there's a natural disaster or anything along that lines, any sort of camp or facility that they set up for people to go to they exist stop saying they don't it's like ufos stop saying they don't exist chemtrails stop saying they don't exist people really i mean you can't say that you heard about that uka gaga bill people people will sit there and go like oh that uka gaga oh man shoot i seen that stuff i know all about that and they but for some reason in society makes people feel they got to say something. They got to have, or Mm -hmm. they will feel stupid of some sort. And I'm saying you're not stupid. You're not stupid. You're not ignorant. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with throwing your hands in the air and go, I don't know. But I would like to know. It's kind of interesting. Uka Gaga, you know, too. I would would like you to know the first time I accepted FEMA camps, this is how far I've come along. First time I accepted FEMA camps as being real. A friend and I decided, hey, it can't be that bad. Look at all the camaraderie. Look at all the friendship. Look at all the togetherness. And thank God I came across TFR. And I would like to say right now, y'all are my family. As I said, I've been estranged from my family. And and you all are a dream come true. And you have my heart, my soul, my respect, 
and my prayers. And uh, just a little while before the show, I, I finally got around to writing a message to Chris and thanking him and opening the door for me. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, no one man could love this, this network any more than myself. I haven't cried in so long because I can't feel sorry for myself anymore. And there's so much... So much sorrow going on in the world. I can't cry for it. But the other day I was making a video and I was making it for the, the people in, in TFR. And I can't say I bawled like a baby, but the first tears in a long time appeared in my eyes. It felt good, but I had work to do. So I manned up and I finished, I finished the job. And uh, I just have to say that uh, Alex Jones being the tip of the spear, no, he's one man who's who's sold out or sells stuff. TFR is the tip of the spear. And when Brooks Agnew mentioned the other night that we are in the top 70,000 visited networks on the web, that's quite an accomplishment when you consider how many there are. So from the bottom of my heart, hugs to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I'm telling you, brother, it is. It's a beautiful thing. It really is such a beautiful thing. I mean, there's so many people. I love coming to the chat room. I'll come in the chat room in the middle of the day just, you know, because of the people that hang out, you know. I mean, you get your Flossum and Jetsum in there, as you would you imagine, for, you know, from people coming out. But wonderful folks. And I always learn something. Always. I'm always on, on TFR, you know, just, you know, just chatting on other people's shows and stuff. I mean, I learned so much from people. It's like it's things that I would never look up. Because, I mean, because there's so many things out there. Exactly. I mean, you get know. so many different <clears throat> perspectives, so many different perspectives and, and people doing, you know, doing their own thing. And, and you get information from, such, you know, different angles. And it's really good because it's like you said, you know, stuff that you wouldn't have even thought about looking into. You know, you hear something on the network and you're like, oh, wow, you know, I'm going to look into that now. You know, it's it's such a you know nice, diverse group of people on the network that, you know, it really is. It really is something special. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but 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 Bill, while we got you, Bill, while we got you on this, the last quarter of this segment, we got to go to the hat. With the topics. Oh, we, we, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got to, got to. Now, for the listeners out there that don't know, it's really a helmet now, but, you know, <laughs> from the old, Bill's from the, but Bill's old school. Bill's old school. He know the hat. It Bill used to be a, the hat where I took. <laughs> Bill did a video <laughs> saying I was going to be on the show, and, and Ken's got this uh, segment called From the Hat. And I went to show my friend the helmet I made, and I realized, oh, what a boob. He calls it the helmet now. I, 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 he, he is bowed to my will, and he's now calling it the hat. So let's get to the hat, Ken. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. It, 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 it's a good segment here. For people out there that don't know what it is, basically you take a bunch of topics, we put it in there. And you will hear it again tomorrow night. Don't forget, before I forget, which you can't, tomorrow is, tomorrow is freaky. Friday. And Bill, man, you ought to come over there on Freaky Friday with us, man. I, I will accept the invitation for sure. Oh, my God. Yeah. Through, what do you, but... think? What you think, Scotty? <laughs> come on, he got to come over on Freaky Friday with us and get freaky, you know, because we talk hang, politics hang all week, you know. We talk hang, politics hang out all with the week. Patch. <laughs> and I, I, oh, my God. I And I keep I keep writing uh, when as the show's closing. How, how else could a ex- Disco dancing hippie spend his Friday night, but here in the chat room. <laughs> Man, so all right, so it's on tomorrow night. You with us, Bill? I, you know, you try keeping me out, it. man. Try keeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sweet, sweet. Oh my right, god! So what we gonna do? But the people listening, out, we put the topics in the hat. Used to be the hat, now it's the helmet. We shake them around, and it's, it's off the wall questions and topics. I mean, ain't no telling what our, our topic here. Bohemian Grove. Oh, Ooh. Jesus. Yeah, Bohemian Grove is the topic. And, man, I got to say, man, back from the day that, you know, that I was I was hippieing it, man, and I was out on the Grateful Dead the, the last tour before Jerry died, you know, and I was out there, you know, and I had heard later that they would go to the Bohemian Grove and they were in the hillbilly camp area, the bushes, 
when the hillbilly camper and the Grateful Dead members who would go there on the list that came out, they were there. And I was like, oh, I was thinking MK Ultra, acid experiments. I was like, wow, man, that's crazy. Bohemian Grove. Go ahead, Bill. Well, I try not to think about it, to be truthful with you. Uh, it's, 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 it's let the demons play. And, and we know the perversity that goes on every second of every day with child slavery. And it's just let, let, let the demons play. Uh, first time I accepted it is like my, my attitude was let them do what they're going to do. They'll pay for it later. I just uh, I don't want to say. Damn, you had to pull that out of the hat now because I really it, – it's a turnoff to me. It really is even though uh, we know what's going on. Just – I just want yeah, yeah, the story. They, they all do a lot of – Ooga booga. Yeah. <laughs> ooga booga. A lot of ooga booga going on over there. But, you know, the thing is about Bohemian Grove is it's one of these – sort of secret meetings right kind of like Bilderberg you got a lot of powerful people from a lot of different places you know coming together and discussing and you, you can't tell me they're not discussing policy there right I mean you, you got so many political players there you know and lie about it too under oath you know under questioning it, it doesn't matter doesn't matter we don't get treated like that. No way. We just step out of line in the least little bit, man. You going you gonna pay your fare. You gonna mm-hmm. get taxed. You gonna go to jail. You can are done. Whoever, you know? can, who, can whoever said life was fair? Because if it were fair, I'd be doing life. I, <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. That's the thing, Bill. That's that thing. You know who made up that damn rule? Excuse my language. You know who made up that rule? It's them damn turds sitting up on the hill. Life ain't fair. Get used to it. Nuh-uh. Life could be fair, but guess what? It is not, and it's not our damn fault. It is No, it's their fault because they yeah, make it they, that they've way. They've ruined They're it for everybody. Called, they cause poverty. They give you drugs. They give you crime. They beat you in the head, and anybody find, trying to follow the rules and be a good person, they, oh, they definitely coming after you because it's the, that's a bigger, the bigger issue. It's the bigger issue for these turds. It's a. It's been going on for thousands of years in our watered down history. We can look at it plain and simple, black and white, right there. In our watered down history, this has been going on for thousands of years. People, the people sitting up there. I mean, remember them cats would go out on the pyramids and stuff, and they stand up there and go like, you know what, y'all people ain't doing right. I'm gonna make the sun go away because they knew the eclipse was gonna happen. Right? <laughs> eclipse come out there, go over the sun, and then they look down at them and say, y'all better kneel down right now, Jack. You better kneel down, and I'll bring the sun back for y'all if y'all just do it. Now hey, sit on you, down, near you. Can, 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 can you bring the hat back? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's true. That's how they do us. That's how they do us. There's no doubt about it. All right, we're going to go back to the hat. <laughs> but, oh, we got a minute and 43 seconds, guys. Hold up. Let me break it out. RS. Got to go around. RS sucks. I'm going to get my opinion on this right now. <laughs> and that IRS, man, they, they full of it. It's a scam. They take your money. You got no choice. That's that's my point on it, guys. A minute and 20. Uh, I, 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 IRS. It, it, T-H-I-E-R-S. Theirs. It's theirs. It's their money. It's their world. We got to pay to play. Hey, yeah, did you get a Scott? They they suck. They're they're just the enforcement <laughs> wing for the Federal Reserve. They'll, they'll come, they'll come cracking your head and uh, taking your money if you don't uh pay your pay your taxes. Uh, turds, yeah. turds. Yeah. And, exactly. and if you get a if you get a, if you get a phone call that says uh we've got your case number the IRS uh the IRS case against you, hang up. They did that to me for like three weeks. They got my case number. The IRS is suing me on the phone. BS. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Bill, yes. you coming tomorrow night? Cause y'all know what time it is tomorrow. Got you got to come out because it's a freaky Friday, man. It's been a great show with Scott Lopez, my co-host. Bill Demarge out here, man, man. And don't forget, he's coming out tomorrow night, guys. Hey, Try me. stopping me. Exactly, Mundo. We'll catch y'all tomorrow, guys. Number love. Good night. Love you all. From the bottom of my heart. Well.
What intel do we have on this Mr. Purple Tie? He's been a pest to many departments and a number of our alphabet divisions. Not quite sure what he is up to. But he seems pretty sure of himself. Sources tell us. Mr. Purple Tie and his YouTube consciousness might lower the count of those enslaved within the Matrix.